Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and all glory to Sri Prabhupada. Jai Ho. Glories to you and glories to all of the devotees. My obeisances to everyone. That was some rocking kirtan, right, Marge? <laughs> I was thinking, I hope she forgets to shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that too, but I said no, but 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 I'm sure you're waiting for the class, so I didn't want to make any offenses for Maharaj and not start the class for you. <laughs> this was such a nice kirtan. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was so the melodies, how oh, deep, the deep melody. Yeah, Kadamakana Maharaj. He blows the roof off every place he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw people go literally mad in this kid. I mean, just almost like the Beatles, you know. Wow. <laughs> Screaming and <laughs> it's, like, it's like ah. they lose all composure. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he's like a, he's like a dry wood. Just take take a he touch a little match to it and it's running in no in no time. <laughs> it's like his care time is really good. Really oh. Amazing. Maharaj, is he still in uh Mayapur or Vrindavan? He's in Vrindavan. He's in Vrindavan, okay. He decided, he decided that he wants to depart. Um, I'm sure people are coming up with him to him with various types of alternatives. Mm -hmm. I think, of course, I'm just you not know, going by what happened in the past, is that he has said, and also Jayadweta Maharaj, who is his guru, also said that he's just doesn't want to waste time trying to get well. He just wants to mm. use whatever time he has left and just guide into Krishna consciousness and leave it up to Krishna. Wow, amazing! His his kirtans are like avadut. It's like completely. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've been I've been with him many times in kirtan, so many times. Especially in the recent past, some really deep. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, Marsh. Yeah, so Krishna is empowering devotees in some ways. Kirtan empowerment is the is the ultimate empowerment. We did. I did a pro. I'm here in India. And we did a program last night in a place called Kolhapur, which is. A big uh, community of Vaishnavas, mostly all disciples of Radha Swami, mm. going on for years. And we had Kirtan, and it was mad. <laughs> 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 I, had, I was dancing with about 50 kids on the stage. The, all, the, all the kids from the audience just ran up. You know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> It was kind of, we wasn't sure if it was a kirtan or it was a fight. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a combination of both. But I, you know, I had a real good Madunga player. He was, he was pounding that Madunga with big smiles on his face at rocket speed. <laughs> 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 People in the audience were going mad. That was good. It was good. <laughs> it was good. Wow. After I was over, I was just like, I, I felt spiritually satisfied and material destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Amazing, Raj. Amazing. We're going to do it tonight again. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, right, right after your show. We have another program with about 200 people. Amazing. Well, Marge, I, I'm not going to hold you up. Please, you can start the class, Marge. That way you can have more fun tonight. Having more fun talking about Kirtan. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's our life. Kirtan is our life. We have Kirtan. Bhakti Siddhartha says, those who who but he uses a certain word. Those who emphasize the kirtan of the name, the holy name of the Lord, are, in other words, they're destined for 
spiritual world. I can't remember how he explains it, but he puts a lot of emphasis on those who who love to do kirtan, who inaugurate kirtan, who take part in kirtan. Wow. It's a lot of emphasis. Prabhupada did too, the importance of kirtan. Wow. And, and, and it's so nice to see today's times, Maharaj, so many youth, so many of them are really setting the way and the example and the mood of um, of, of really getting in, um, in, absorbed in the holy name. Yeah, yeah, I see. And when I came to Harrisburg, it's a good rocking program there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good to see that. And this is Krishna, is in He's, he's empowering these young people who are connected with our society either in this life or coming from previous lives as children of our devotees mm. who are focused on kirtan. <clears throat> and it's really big. I mean, just like coming up this next week, not this weekend, next weekend, is a huge, gigantic three-day kirtan in a place called Pune. It's in, just, um, just north, just south of Bombay. Mm. Mom's going to be there, and many local kirtan ears from India are going to be there, and many other persons. Nice. Yeah, yeah so kirtan. Madhava travels all year round, going from kirtan place to kirtan place. Wow. That's all he does, is kirtan. Sometimes he takes a break. To, you know, rest a little while with constantly moving all around the world. He really loves the holy name. You, he, even the way he chants is so meditative. Yeah, that's what, that's a perfect word. It's a meditation. Mm -hmm. So sweet. Yeah. Yeah, the kirtan wave is, is big. It was, Picking up more speed too, it's good. Oh, that's nice, wonderful. Yeah, it's like I will be going back to Ljubljana for Gorpurnima and we'll probably have a three or four day Kirtan festival there for Gorpurnima. And that will be back in Ukraine, Maharaj, or in? Or... That's in Ljubljana in, uh, in uh, Slovenia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Of course, Sado Sangha is coming up in uh, the U.S. on the 26th of May. The yes, 20th. I heard. Yes. Come. I'm going to be there. I'd love to see you. Oh, Marge, we will definitely try to come. Yeah, I just found that out. Yes, I have to figure out with the services, but we will definitely try to come, Marge. Would love to, to Definitely would love to see you. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll be down. There'll be many, many great kirtan leaders. So that's three goals. And, you know, kirtans are happening everywhere. Um, if, you're on the, if you're on the kirtan mood, you, you, you'll notice everywhere around the world there's programs for extended kirtan weekends or days. It's going on everywhere. Nice. Amazing. And March, when, when you come in the end of May, will you be here for a while, Marge? I'm going to be here. I'm going to be in America in the beginning of April. Oh! And then I'm going to a few places in Pennsylvania is somewhere around the May. Oh, good, March. I will contact you, Marge. <laughs> definitely come. Oh, good, good, good. What if you could organize like a, a like maybe even like a twenty four not a twelve a twelve hour kirtan day like pick one Saturday or even Sunday and have it from like ten o'clock in the morning to ten excuse me ten in the evening just do a twelve hour kirtan. Maharaj, when you are here, we would love to plan for that, and I'm sure yeah. our congregation would be our youth especially would be, would love it. It will really put Harrisburg back, you know, in a very prominent. You get more and more. As soon as you start doing kirtan, everything comes. Everything yes. else follows. Any other success in any other areas, all, all centers around. 
Marge, I will definitely contact you after the class on when you'll be here and we can plan for that one Sunday. And uh, mm -hmm. and 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 I see our devotee um Nitya Gopal Prabhu is online and he loves Kirtan Mara. He can dance off like you know, like yeah. <laughs> that, that that will be much if you have Maharaj to enjoy the kirtan with Maharaj. <laughs> oh so yeah, sad. yeah, I see him in many kirtans. Yes, Maharaj. So so how 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 contact you, Maharaj? I'll write to you after the class, and we can plan when you when you'll be here, and we'll have a nice program. Oh yes. I'm in the U.S. Uh, in April, May, and June. Okay, April, May, June. Perfect, Maharaj. Yeah, so some weekends are full and others are open. So we can just... Okay. Mm. Okay, much. We 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 will. I'll definitely write to you and and plan your open weekends a week. We can plan something for sure. Okay. Whenever you come, March, the congregation gets younger. <laughs> Even the old gets younger, Marge. <laughs> Anybody sit down? Can't sit down. No wallflowers allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they're flowers, we take them off the wall and put them in the plants and circulate the plants all around. <laughs> <laughs> no wallflowers allowed. <laughs> we had a river on Kirtan last night. The ladies got so excited, they started almost running onto the stage, you know, the whole the women's group they came right at the brink of the stage so i just handed them the microphones and they started to sing also it was wild kirtan it was something out of combination of vaudeville slapstick chaos and karanga mahaprabhu's mercy <laughs> Hi, Krishna. Marsh, we want to, we humbly request that when you come here, Marsh, we, we, we want to see all that, much. we want to experience that with you, Marsh. I'll leave out the chaos because. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really a great character. The kids really took it, took to it like they were just bopping all over the place. <laughs> Maharaj, we had that kind of fun uh, during the Janmashtami. Yes, we we get the lot of you know crowd uh, even the non regular devotee and they go wild when they see the kirtan. Yes, yeah, kirtan is the yuga dharma. Lord Chaitanya came to give us this mercy. Yep, Absolutely. he demonstrated it and he he uh, taught it. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll arrange when Maharaj is here. We'll arrange all kinds of devotees. You know, they will have the fun. Yes, Maharaj. I will definitely write to you much after class and find your and, and, and request for your open weekend when you're here and we can plan something. Oh, it'll be so mm -hmm. ecstatic. I was with uh, Trivikram Swami. Oh. We were doing a joint program a couple, about a month ago. <laughs> and he loves Kirtan. <laughs> he was like absorbing Kirtan. So we were both supposed to speak. So when I came in, he was reading Kirtan. Um, that I joined. It was about maybe 150 students who came for the program. And uh, so then I spoke for about 20 minutes. And then it was his turn to spoke, speak. And he said, Prabhupada said, speak less, kirtan more. <laughs> so he said, he said, he started doing kirtan as his presentation. <laughs> And then he spoke a little bit. But anyway, yeah, he's another person who just loves kirtan. Is when you understand kirtan in its essence, you understand that this this is the way you become Krishna conscious. <laughs> dancing, dancing, taking nice prasad, associating with devotees, sharing philosophical knowledge. The wonderful process can't be that all centers around Kirtan. We will plan for that, Maharaj. We will yeah. plan for that. You know, it'll be two days. I have no no uh, objections. <laughs> I will write to you, Maharaj, for sure. I'm now I'm I'm more excited. I'm I will write to you after and get your dates, Maharaj.
I'll let you do the planning and then you can uh, then we can decide on the dates. Yes, Marge. Okay, so we take Tanya very timely to Hari Lila chapter 3, verse number 12. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya or Vata Rinda Dasa Sakka Pitta Matta Kanta Dana Lana Raja Kriya Kar Krishna Prema Vistahana Absorbed in such transcendental love. Lord Sri Krishna enjoys in Raj with him devoted servants, friends, parents, and conjugal lovers. Absorbed in such transcendental love, Lord Krishna enjoys with his friends, lovers, and other persons. The descendants of Sri Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead, is very purposeful. And the Bhagavad Gita said that one who knows the truth about the Lord's descent and his various activities is once liberated, and does not have to fall again for this existence of birth and death if he leaves his present material body. In other words, one who is factually understands Krishna makes his life perfect. Imperfect life is realized in material existence and five different relationships we share with every everyone in this material world. Neutrality, servitude, or servitorship friendship, parental love, and amorous love between husband and wife, or lover and beloved. These five enjoyable relationships within the material world are perverted reflections of the relationships with the absolute personality of Godhead and the transcendental nature. That absolute personality, Sri Krishna, ascends to revive the five eternally existing relationships. Thus, he manifests his transcendental past and in Raj, so that people may be attracted to that sphere of activity and leave aside their intimate int imitation relationships with the mundane. And after fully exhibiting all such activities, the Lord disappears. And the Gyan to Medambasya, Gyanam Gyanam Salakaya, Kyaptun Militam Yena, that's my Sri Gurudeva Maha. Sri Chaitanya went on the stone, stamped the gun, made the boot away, swam, whip up to them, my young, the path, and swam, but I become. The ma owned the snoopa daya, the snapper, swam, the correct, and she must be bhakti, the way down to swami, the phenomenon, the numbers day, said, as what three days day. Goravani, the chari, the nervous, say, so soon you have already, plus that clear was the time. Punch a cup, the room, the chanty, pass in the day, the chap. Vitanam Pavane Jo Vaishnavi Jo Namahindra Jai Sri Krishna Saintanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Shivasana Gora Matavindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So it's the, the activities that conditioned souls perform in this material world are reflections of the of the pure activities that go on with Krishna in the spiritual world. The word rasa means mellow. Mellow means a certain flavor that comes with a certain type of relation. So there is a flavor that people taste in a friendship relationship. There's a certain taste of flavor that people taste in master and servant relationship. There's a flavor that people taste in uh, parent and child relationship. And of course, the most flavorful of all the relationships, although everyone's flavor has flavor, this is a condensed form of flavor and the sweetness of conjugal relationships with lover and beloved, husband and wife. And so these four, along with the neutrality, which means to appreciate and meditate on something without any 
activity in that mood of appreciation and absorption, that activity is also a flavor that comes by way of that activity. Each of these flavors are sweet, but they have a certain mood to the flavor, which gives that particular relationship its unique quality. And so these, these relationships that we have in this world based on these five uh, connections, neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parental love, amorous love, are actually coming from the original source, and that is Krishna himself. As Krishna is the source of everything, he's also the source of relationship. So relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead is not limited for just to master and servant. Some religious teachings just limit their uh, teachings to this particular. Of course, that is the foundation for the relationship. But as the relationship develops in the relationship to that association, then these other relationships can also manifest. So they're there in the spiritual world. Krishna has his friends, Krishna has his parents, Krishna has his relationships with the cows, Krishna has his relationships with the, the gopis. Um, and of course, you know, with, with the trees, the plants, the birds, and others. They're more in a neutral, neutral relationship with Krishna. Some, some are in a dasi relationship or a servitor relationship. So these things in the material world are fraught with uh, difficulties and they're also temporary. The reflections of the reality. So because that nature is there within the soul, we manifest that same nature in a, in a somewhat uh, reflected way in this material world. It's almost like a shadow of the original. You, a shadow looks like the original, but it cannot perform the activities of the original, although it has the same form as the original. Or you might even use the example of a mirror. If you sit in front of a mirror and you eat something, you're tasting something, but the image in the mirror is not tasting anything because there's no there's no, there's no, there's no one in that reflection. It's just a reflection of what is on the outside. So this material world is like that. There is no juice to the activities that are that go on in the spiritual world that are full of transcendental happiness and enjoyment. So that is our nature to experience that. But here, people take up these mundane relationships, which we all get them because just being in this world, we all have parents, we all have friends, we all, and sometimes we have some relationships with people that we work for, more like master to servant or boss to employer to employee. And sometimes we engage in these other things also. But in the spiritual world, all of these activities are pure, just like like the example of the amorous loving relationship in this world as opposed to in the spiritual world. So in this world, the standard, at least the uh, accepted moral standard, is to get married and have a relationship with uh, your partner. And that amorous relationship is, is based on, uh, you know, um, the sweetness of that love. Now, if people want to have a relationship outside of marriage, that is called cheating or um, illicit activities. But in the spiritual world with Krishna, that same uh, relationship has a higher principle than it does in the material world. In other words, one may be condemned in the material world for taking the relationships outside of marriage. But in the spiritual world, that is considered even higher than being married, just like the gopis. The gopis have husbands. 
but they give more attention to Krishna than their husbands. And they're always eager to be with Krishna, to serve Krishna, to enjoy with Krishna in the amorous mood. And Krishna finds that very really pleasing. And then that type of relationship makes it exciting when there is some, some cheating going on in the name of loving Krishna. Because when Krishna is the center, everything is of the highest standard spiritual morality. There's no such thing. Therefore, Krishna can enjoy with 16,108 women, and it's all considered to be the highest form of loving expression. Because he is the source of everything, he is the sunam bonum of everything, he is the principle by which love exists, and therefore he is the embodiment of pure love in, in, a, complete, in a complete manifestation of that pure love. So when he performs loving relationships, whether it's with people who are married or not married, that is con considered to be spiritual love. But if we do that in the material world, there is some condemnation. Sometimes there are some legal infractions. And it's fraught with difficulties. So it, there is a twist in the loving relationships in the spiritual world as opposed to the material world. If one goes outside of marriage, that is considered to be, uh, you know, degraded, abominable, illicit. But in the spiritual world, if they go outside of marriage to be with Krishna, that's, that is higher than accepting uh, a married partner, even though they may be married. When the, when the, uh, the wife or the brahmanas left their husband to be with Krishna, Krishna really appreciated their, their love, but he told them your love is not perfect. Go back and stay with your husband, and when your love becomes perfect, we will meet again. <laughs> and so is she, if Krishna interfering with loving, with marriageable relationships? Anyone that's married to Krishna in the spiritual realm is just part of Krishna's lila in order to enhance the loving pastimes of what we call paramour love or extramarital love. But don't try it in the material world because here it's condemned and sometimes you can also get killed <laughs> if you hang around with somebody else's wife or husband. <laughs> you might find yourself in a very difficult situation and you might even lose your life. <laughs> So that, that's not recommended not in the material world. It's recommended that one stay with one particular partner up until the time of retirement from, from all responsibility. But in the spiritual world, anyone who, who gives up their duties towards anything and goes to Krishna, that is considered the highest form of duty or the highest form of loving expression. Krishna is the center. That's why when Krishna told Arjuna to fight, and Arjuna didn't want to fight, uh, Arjuna was basically talking about immorality. And Krishna was telling you, you're talking about you know, all of these good qualities and moral principles, but I can say you're a fool because you don't know what real morality is. In other words, to follow the instructions of Krishna or to give pleasure to Krishna is the highest form of morality and spirituality also. So we want to uh, experience the happiness of these different moods, then one should aspire to develop these relationships with Krishna. Therefore, in the process of bhakti at a certain stage of development, one develops an attraction for a particular um, mood by which they can serve Krishna, and usually in friendship, parental love, or, or conjugal love, then they connect with a person who is in that mood, and then they worship that person, pray to that person, honor that person, glorify that person, and that person helps them come higher and higher towards that same rasa or that mellow that they are in. So that's a stage of bhakti, but it's there in Lord Chaitanya's teachings. It's called spontaneous loving attraction. 
So we should aspire. Aspire means to come to the point of uh, fulfillment or perfection for a particular relationship with Krishna. We write that we all have the relationship of servitorship. That is, we're all servants of the Lord. Jivaya Surubai Nitya Krishna Das. But in these loving relationships and friendship, the friends are serving Krishna. In parental love, the parents are serving Krishna. In an amorous love, the gopis are serving Krishna. So it's all based on service, but in a particular flavor, a particular mood. In the, in the material world, people take these relationships as an opportunity to gain their own benefit. A person will develop friendship with from another in order to get something from that relationship that will help them in their own desires in life. So, um, and even in servitorship like that also. Sometimes in, in married life, people take advantage of each other in order to fulfill their own life. So when one is motivated by personal interest, it's now that is material. When one is motivated by Krishna's interest or the mood of service, that is spiritual. Okay, so this is a very sweet and very direct uh, Alpha gives a nice purport that the relationships in this world, Krishna came to perform his pastimes in these different relationships with his eternal associates in Vrindavan, in Mathura, in Dwarka, and in other places just to attract the conditioned souls in this material world to have a relationship with him in different, in different flavors accordingly. So Krishna performed, he was, he, he was in friendship, he was in conjugal love, he was in parental affection. All of these things went on while he was here in the uh, material world. He was also in Dasya. And people who admired him, who associated with him and had an attraction to him but didn't do any service, they were in the mood of neutrality. So, yeah, um, when Krishna is the center, then everything becomes uh, successful, or sweet, wonderful. It's because Krishna is the center, we accept different centers in this material world in order to function according to the laws of the material energy to maintain the body. But this is just a drama that we have to play in order to ultimately come to the stage of acting in our real constitutional position, uh, loving service to Krishna, in one of these five transcendental medals, the Rasas. When Krishna comes and he, he acts in these relationships just to show the beauty of these relationships. And he brings his eternal associates, his friends, his conjugal lovers, they also descend with him from the spiritual world to assist him in his pastimes in the material world, where those who are devotees of in the material world, if they are fortunate, they come in contact with Krishna while he's here, and then they move forward in a very developed way towards the goal of life. And as Prabhupada mentions in the very beginning, he says that one who knows the truth about Krishna's descent and various activities is at once on the liberated platform, doesn't have to fall again into this material world. And that is Janma Karma Chime Divyam Eva Viti Tophataha Tatva Deham Purna Janma Naiti Mam Eti Sura Juna. 4.9 in the Bhagavad Gita, the one who knows the transcendental nature of my activities and birth in this material world does not, upon leaving the body, again take birth in this material world, O son of Bhutti. So Prabhupada is on record by saying that this is the most important verse in the Bhagavad Gita. 
And this was brought out by one of his, uh, his in Prabhupada's very advanced uh, sannyasi disciples. Uh, in a lecture, he said that this, he heard it from Prabhupada directly, said this, Prabhupada said this verse from the fourth chapter, ninth verse, in the, is the most important verse, because it says here, if you know, and that means if you realize the nature of Krishna's transcendental activities and his birth are, are divyam. Divyam means they're not part of this material world. Although he appears to take birth, he doesn't take birth. Although he appears at performing activities like the conditioned souls, these are all on the transcendental plane. If you realize that, then then ninety mamiti sorjuna, you know you don't oh, you don't go you don't take birth again in this material world. So quoting this verse is really the uh, understanding of the success of bhakti to understand Krishna and to develop these relationships with Krishna, which gives us complete understanding of Krishna. We all have a relationship with Krishna, but it's hidden. It's covered by this material body, material world. Uncovering that is the process of devotion. Prabhupada says that bhakti is simply uncovering what is the truth, revealing the truth by getting rid of the untruth. More like shedding away the unnecessary and then coming to the essence. It's like a diamond may be found in a rough. If you take the diamond and you can't see the glitter of the diamond, but if you polish it, and then all of the contamination of that stone becomes, disappears and the beautiful sparkling, cluster, pure diamond shines. So our soul is like that. It's pure, it's full of love for Krishna, but it's covered by this material energy in the form of these mundane relationships that go on as sources of happiness in this world. Okay, so thank you. We can go in, into the area of discussion. Thank you so much, Maharaj. As you were speaking, it sounded so flowy and so sweet that it, um, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, devotees have a chance to ask questions and to really reflect on this amazing class, like you said, amazing purple by Shri Prabhupada, sweet and yet so and so nice. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to ask devotees uh, if you could uh, turn your videos on wherever you are, that would be really nice so that Maharaj can, as we can have each other's association and darshan. And if devotees have any questions, please do raise your hands. Okay, I will have Nitikopal. Go ahead, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj Dandutanam Jaisal Prabhupada. Very nice class. Thank you so much. It's a wonderful topic. So Maharaj, um, when we are discussing about the relation in this world and the spiritual world, so uh, the spiritual world has the relations like the gopi has the material relations in this world. The spiritual world has the relations like material relations in spiritual world for gopis. Material? In the sense gopis are the daughters, you know, uh, wives, and uh, in the material world here, they, ha they, are, they are the wives, daughters uh, in the material world. Does gopis have the same relation in spiritual world? Yeah, but these are just shadows in order to enhance the pastime of Krishna. Here, Radharani has a husband who's named is Abhimanyu, and who you know, plays the role of her husband. And then she has a, his, his mother, who is her mother in law. She is, she is Kutila, no, Jatila. Jatila is the mother in law of the, the mother of Abhimanyu and mother in law of Radharani. And so the pastimes go on in the spiritual world also, where uh, Jitila is always watching out for Radharani so she doesn't run for Krishna. <laughs> and Krishna is always using this. Just like one time, 
uh, Krishna took the form of Abhimanyu and came. And then uh, he wanted to associate with Radharani, so he took the form. So he was there in Yadvat, which is the place where Radharani lives. And in there, Jatila and her daughter, Kuchila, sister of Abhimanyu, were there. And then just a little bit after that, the real Abhimanyu comes. And then Krishna says, there's Krishna in the form of me who's coming to sneak up on Rani Rani. And so, you know, Jatila gets really excited and she goes out there and starts feeding her son, you know, thinking it's Krishna. And Krishna's laughing. <laughs> Krishna is a little mischievous because that's what it takes to get things done. <laughs> so all of these people are put in place like that by Kornamasi, who is the commander-in-chief of Vrindavan. And she has these relationships set up, but she understands it's just to enhance the loving relationship with Krishna. Because the excitement of power or love is, is greater than you know, what is called uh, nuptial love or wedded love, wedlock. So happiness, all of these persons are there. But every girl belongs to Krishna. <laughs> So if you think that your wife is for your enjoyment, and you're stealing Krishna's property. <laughs> Whole universes belong to Krishna Maharaj. We are also belong to Krishna. Because that's the source of, of existence, Krishna. Yes, everything emits from him. This world is a drama, and we're just on the stage and playing roles. Right. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. That was a nice question. Nice start of the discussion. Thank you. Prikshit, go ahead. You are not muted. Are you able to unmute yourself? No, it got minimized on me. Something. Hi, Krishna okay. Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sri Prabhupada. Thank you for the lecture you gave. How you explained it gave even deeper meaning to uh, chapter four, text nine. In Janma Karma Chamedivyam. In the understanding of that. That when you said that when we do everything to satisfy Krishna, then that's spiritual, no matter what the level is and what the activity is. So you also mentioned that the gopis relate to Krishna and conjugal love, and they like to do that even more than relating to their husbands. Then I began to think about the husbands. So what's their relationship with Krishna then? If I'm taking the two things together, and saying that the gopis related because we can understand that in conjugal love to some extent of course we're in a spiritual world but what is the relationship between the gopis husbands and krishna then that's what i was wondering about they make it exciting by trying to prevent their wife from going oh increases their the love of the wives to be with Krishna. So obstacles just increase in the mood of wanting to be with the lover. If something is so easy, sometimes it's taken to but if you want and if there's obstacles in it, when you overcome the obstacles and you get your desired goal, it's even greater, it's even sweeter. It's more exciting, okay. Okay. And when Prabhupada wanted to get that temple in uh, Bombay, 
the Rasa Rasa Bihari temple, there were so many obstacles. But Prabhupada was like a general on the battlefield commanding his disciples how to fight the battle in order to get that property, which was rightfully ours, but that we were trying to be cheated in. And we were up against some really heavy opposition, really heavy, uh, from government people, and people who had power and positions and money. The Prabhupada fought his way through that. And if you read the book read, uh, written by Giri Ratswami, uh, let me build you a temple. It's a beautiful, very big volume book on the whole story of that gaining of that temple. It's an amazing experience. And Prabhupada at the end, he said, it was a good fight. <laughs> 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 so devotees enjoy a little bit of, you know, friction in order to get on Krishna. <laughs> Sometimes we create that. <laughs> Yeah, and then Prabhupada also said, you know, sometimes you should try to do something difficult in order to spread Krishna consciousness. That was a really nice question. Yeah. Well, I sorry, well, I didn't catch the last one. Said sometimes we should do. Sri Prabhupada said we just we should do something difficult in order to take a, take a risk for Krishna. Oh, take a risk for Krishna. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Don't risk your Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Don't risk your Krishna consciousness, Maharaj said, but take risks for Krishna. Maharaj, that is a really, actually, I'll go to their Krishna questions, their Krishna's question first, Maharaj. He has a question in the chat where he said, Had a Krishna, Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to your prophet, all glories to you. Thank you for the wonderful description of this nectar verse. Krishna comes himself to attract living entities, giving them the opportunity to revive the relationship with him and then disappears. What can we do to still try to continue to revive our relationship with him when we cannot see him? Well, that's the, that service and separation. The relationship is never lost. Physical proximity is just um, one way to relate on the spiritual plane. In the material world, it's the main thing. In the spiritual world, relationships can be based on being with the object of devotion or being separated from the object. In order for that relationship to develop in the mood of separation, there has to be some meeting. So in meeting Krishna or being with Krishna, he, he attracts that loving mood and then when he disappears, that loving mood extends itself into the mood of, the, again, wanting to be with Krishna. So that's worshiping Krishna in the mood of separation. That means thinking about him, praying about him, praying to him, um, trying to serve in ways that would be pleasing to him. All of these are expressions of the mood of wanting to be with him in the mood of separation from him. So mood of separation is just as uh, equal in sweetness and even greater than the mood of meeting. In fact, the mood of separation is even greater because the hankering for this, the association of Krishna is increases that loving mood. You see that in the material world sometimes too. You see, when a person is separated from someone they love, as soon as they come together again, that immediate moment of meeting again is so exuberant and so loving and so wonderful. But then it wears off in the material world and then people go back to the routine again. But in the mood of separation, when that meeting comes, wow, it's like everything.
You see that I see that in the airports when people are waiting for their loved ones, and they, they haven't seen them, and then they come together. And in that meeting, there is so much joy and affection exchange, and words are coming out from both sides, and everyone is just again reminiscing their old times or exp expressing their love for their friend or their other you know, relative. But then in the material world, it doesn't last. But in the spiritual world, Krishna makes it last by coming and going. <laughs> he comes, gets you all fired up, and then he leaves. And then you get fired up in the mood of separation, and he comes, and it's sweet again, and then he leaves again. <laughs> So that's that he does that through his devotees. That's special. Mars, that is such a nice um, example, just like Dear Krishna said of the, of the airport. Mars, piggybacking on uh, Dear Krishna's question is sometimes um, in the mood of separation, how can we maintain the devotional mood of separation? without giving up or without uh, being distracted or by replacing it with something mundane? By chanting, by hearing about, hearing about Krishna increases that loving service. Mm -hmm. and so we have to regularly hear about Krishna, regularly chant the glories of the Lord. This keeps us connected, connected in that mood of separation. And it, and it charms the heart, it awakens the bhakti. But if we're not serving and not hearing and chanting, and we're waiting for Krishna to come, it's like, you know, it's not, that's just mundane. You, you show your eagerness to be with Krishna by hearing about him, by serving him, by serving the devotees. All of these are expressions of I want to get, I want to be with Krishna. That's the underlying mood of, of service, is to connect with Krishna. So these the process of bhakti is the expressions of wanting to be with Krishna, especially hearing and chanting about Krishna. That's the essence. And that hearing and chanting is non different than being with Krishna also. When it reaches the stage of freedom from offense, when there's pure hearing and chanting. And one can experience Krishna through that sound vibration. Thank you, Maharaj. That was really, really helpful. Thank you so much. Um, any questions from devotees? Any? Uh, yes, Nitya Gopal, go ahead. Yeah, so, sorry, much. So regarding the, uh, we discussed uh, everyone has a particular relation with Krishna. How one go about reviving that relation? Is there any, uh, any particular uh, sadhana or we have to just go on the sadhana and that will be revealed automatically? Yeah, very enchanting. It's the song. That revives the relationship. Everything is based on hearing about Krishna. When hearing becomes strong, then one will, one will want to repeat what they hear. And that is Kirtan on the person. Which eventually fortifies and strengthens smartness and remembering. The whole process is to hear about Krishna. Hear about his pastimes, hear about his qualities, his forms, his names, his pure devotees. Here, as much as possible. It's very simple. Very nice. Thing. And very, very nice question too, Nita Gopal. Thank you that we just continue hearing and chanting. 
just following our sadhana. That's amazing. Thank you, Maharaj. Any points from devotees? Anything? I'm hearing some feedback. I don't know whether it's my end or what. But are there any questions from devotees? Maharaj, that's one thing that I would like to um, clarify just for me because I think I may have missed a little half of the sentence. When, when, when you were mentioning about the pastime of the wives of the Brahminas, when they came to see the Lord and, and Krishna says, go back. And I think, and, and, and Marge, please correct me if I'm wrong. I think you said that, that the, the Lord told them to leave because their perfection, their love wasn't perfect. Something, Marge, you were saying, I'm trying to understand that. mentioned their love wasn't perfect yet. So Krishna wanted them to go back and serve their husbands and think of him. And by thinking him in the mood of separation, they would increase that loving mood towards him. And that would bring him to perfection. And that goes back to the, Mars, the comment you said about uh, uh, service and separation, Vipralamba Seva. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Marge, also, I have another question, Marge, when you were speaking about, uh, you know, the, uh, the the cheating propensity, you know, like how Krishna is a cheater. And sometimes the devotees, even the gopis, they would, do, they would do a little cheating to go see the Lord. And sometimes we come across such situations where devotees take that pastime very literal. <laughs> and they say, oh, but I'm cheating the name of the Lord. Oh, I'm doing this name of the Lord, taking it very loosely. March, how can we how can we be careful not to imitate being the pure devotees of the Lord, thinking that it's okay and get away with quote unquote with murder, you know? Like how can we not imitate? You're not Krishna, that's for sure. <laughs> so if you're doing the same thing you would be doing, then you're imitating. So uh Sometimes devotees will do something a little outside of the box, but it shouldn't be done for personal, personal motivation. It may also be done for the sake of service. Like, you know, I'm thinking of this. This is. Sometimes, I don't know how to express this one. <laughs> it's a little, a little difficult to express this one without being in the mood of self-interest. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I know we're like, you know, some people, when they organize programs, like big programs, they'll put they'll put certain people's names on the list just to attract people to come. <laughs> and these people are not going to be there anyway. <laughs> so they they juice up the the roster in order to attract people to come. So you might say that's a little bit of cheating, but. The purpose is to get more people to come, which is good in that sense. But I wouldn't recommend you do that. What are you talking? And then when they're not there, you say, "Well, oh yeah, they couldn't make it. They at the last minute, they decided." Marge, I was going to say that, that. Oh, I can say that they didn't come. Then probably next time when I do it, they'll say, "Okay, honestly, was a liar." <laughs> Yeah, it's like that sometimes. But, I mean, I'm not saying you should do that, but it, I mean, it, it would be better if the idea is to get more people to come. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Thank you, Maraj. Maraj, there's a question here from Nashringa Leela. She says, Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. So, Guru Shishir Prabhupada, could you please explain the Siddhara Pra? the Siddha Pranali initiation that is practiced in India and why is it not recommended? I met some devotees who left ISKCON 
because of that, and they call it traditional initiation. How to understand it? No. <laughs> We're opening up an encyclopedia worth of discussion. <laughs> Whoa. As I mentioned, Mahaprabhu has given us the formula that unless one is spontaneously attracted to Krishna, they haven't reached perfection. That spontaneity comes with the development to the different stages of bhakti. When one reaches the platform of Mishta, which is not easy to attain, which is the fifth stage, and one is free from most of the impediments in their devotional life. 75% free from all the narcos. Then in that platform, they stay fixed in their practice of devotional service. And they develop preliminary attraction for Krishna. As Mishka matures, it comes to Ruchi. When Nuchi comes and there is a sweet taste that manifests according to different activities performed in devotional service. But on the platform of Ruchi, the devotee is satisfied, is happy. Now, from Ruchi comes the next is Ashakti. Now, Ashakti starts to manifest the platform of spontaneous devotional service. It also starts on Ruchi. But it begins on Ruchi and, and manifests itself on Ashakti. On that platform, one is spontaneously attracted to Krishna in a certain mood, whether in friendship, in conjugal love, or in mostly those two, mostly in friendship or in conjugal love, or even in Vatsayaras. And then one practices Raganuga Sadhana. And Raghunuga Sadhana is given usually by your spiritual master or one who is qualified, who is already situated on that platform. And there are principles by which you follow that sadhana. Now, His Holiness Shiva Ram Maharaj has been in, in encouraging devotees to understand that the process of bhakti um, needs to come to that spiritual platform of spontaneous devotional service. So he's writing books based on this. And one small book that he wrote is called Spontaneous Devotional Service, which he outlines the whole process and explains, you know, what it's not, what it is, according to Shastra, according to Guru, according to sadhus who have who write about these, especially Rupa Goswami and and Raghunath Das Goswami. These are two, two devotees who are practicing spontaneous devotional service in their writings. In their writings. So, uh, yeah, but then it's recommended that one, uh, in order to properly execute the Raghunath Sadhana, one has to develop, and one has to work under the guidance of a guru. And then there are certain qualifications in order to enter into Raghavad Goswami. But it is a stage that is required that every devotee come to that stage and be able to uh, execute bhakti in that stage. So uh, it's mentioned in, in uh, Rupa Goswami's Udwala Nilamani, Uvinda Lilamrita, Vilava uh, Kusur Kusu Manjali, which is a book that was just recently released by Shiva Ramaraj. He outlines the whole process based on Raghunath Das Goswami's spontaneous loving devotional service to Srimati Radharani. So it's an interesting book. I su suggest you get it and read it because he gives the whole process along with the higher mellows. Explained in Raghunath Das Goswami's loving mood to Srimati Radharani. So these things are, are available, but one should know, one should understand when one has to know when they're ready to perform Raghunath Sadhana. If you're still overcome with anarthas, then you're not ready. <laughs> and then you should know what the anarthas are. 
So the anarthas are 16, and there's 16 anarthas, four categories of four, and each category is different. So in the Durya Kundambini, and in, um, what is that other book? Um, by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, um, um, and think of it. Both of them outline the whole process of spontaneous devotional service. It's also mentioned nicely in Raghunath Das Goswami's Mana Shiksha. That's a nice book to read also. So you can read about these things, then you can see where you are. The idea is to honestly evaluate well, what material attachments you have and what is the step, steps you need to move forward and free yourself from those material attachments. And then come to these different stages of bhakti as Rupa Goswami outlines the nine stages. So, as I mentioned, when one comes to the platform of Ruchi, they're on the brink of performing Raghadukha Sadhana. And it usually mentions that you know, Siddha Pranali is the initiation into Raghadukha Sadhana, which develops. Even it's it's more of a higher stage of Raghunuga Sadhana. When you're actually performing Raghunuga Sadhana, you start to uh, understand deeper what is your relationship with Krishna. And then that once you understand that relationship with Krishna, then there is different services you perform in that relationship with Krishna. And that is uh, that is Siddha Siddha Pranali initiation. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Uh, uh, eliminated that process from devotional service because it was being misused, abused, and cheated. And there, and Srila Prabhupada followed the in. So when they asked Prabhupada, how will we know? Prabhupada said, when, when the disciple is ready, the Guru will come and reveal to them the process of the Bhagavad Gita Sadhana. So, uh, yeah, you have to see where you are. Where are you in devotional service? Are you still on? Most of us are still on an art and energy. We're struggling with those 16 and art. And uh, this year, coming up in April, we'll be doing a disciples meeting in New Vrindavan from the 7th to the 10th of April, which is Easter weekend. We invite every, anyone and anyone to come for the program. And we'll be speaking about Madhurya Kandini, which hits on this whole platform of Ravana Prasadana. And for those of you who are interested, we have two very illustrious guests to speak. One is uh, Bhutta Bhavana Prabhu, and the other one is Chidi Shakti, both of them. Uh, your, your god brother, god sister, they will be coming. So, we're going to explore this process a little bit more of spontaneous devotion and service, which is important because unless we understand that that is a stage that we have to come to, the reason why uh, ISKCON is somewhat not averse to it, but at the same time not giving it any emphasis, is because Prabhupada didn't give it any emphasis. Because when Prabhupada came, we will all just be giving the process of devotion to Sunday. Prabhupada talked about it, and Prabhupada wrote about it, and Prabhupada referenced it, but he explained the qualifications for practice. So that's nicely explained in Sivaran Maharaj's book, Sudha Bhakta Chintamani. I would highly recommend devotees to get that book, Sudha Bhakta Chintamani, which he wrote about. 15 years ago. And then you can understand what is that sadhana that you have to perform in order to come to the stage of understanding the Siddha Pranali. In the Siddha Pranali, there are eight principles, there's 11 principles by which identify the uh, characteristic of a, a jiva who. Uh, ha has attained to that stage of, of Raghunuga Sadhana, Raghunuga Bhakti, is my thing. It's not an easy thing. Now, there are gurus going around who are not ISKCON gurus. They are coming from either the Gaudiya Math or have branched off from ISKCON and started their own little preaching. 
who are offering people Raganuga Sarana or teachings of Raganuga. Now, I don't know how bona fide they are. I don't know enough about them. I won't mention any names, but they are there in the United States. They are also there in Europe. They are also there in India. And uh, Marj, thank you for this wonderful explanation because I know that there has, I hear it bits and pieces of, you know, such things happening that sometimes confusing devotees. And I think sometimes for some devotees, it, 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 um, it confuses them to the point where they think it's something, the, the, the grass is greener on the other side. And then they just go and then they, and they get so mo more confused and then they, confuse those around them and it's just a, such a nice explanation Marsh for and thank you for really clarifying and as, as you're speaking Marsh I, I I couldn't help but think of two very yes. extreme grass is greener on the other side but if you're a cow it is greener if you're a dog then you won't know what to do with <laughs> that's true <laughs> Become a cow before you decide to go for the greener grass. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, that's right, Marge. But much as you were speaking in, about this, I was thinking about two very esteemed devotees, and you know that I had a good fortune as Mother Kalini and Mother Krishna Nandini. Like I know Mother Kalini, you know, she gave her life up until the end until she felt sick and she couldn't live in Gita Nagri. Her main service was cooking Lord Jagannath's dressing and caring for the cows. And she never ever once mentioned that this is my, you know, my Siddha Swarup or whatever. She 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 was just she just had the natural inclination to serve the deities, the devotees, and the cows. And for Mother Krishna Nandini, she she gave her life, you know, as per Sri Prabhupada's instructions, one time she said that Prabhupada told her to take care of the devotees or marriage or something like that. And that's what she did all her life. But it, but she never ever said, oh, this is my siddha, this is my, you know, whatever. She just did it because out of service. So much we have living examples of devotees, proper disciples, senior devotees, who just did it out of service, not to find out that is their siddha. So do we have to get into that stage much or can we just continue the service and not even worry about it? Well, there is a, there is ways to increase that, that, that loving attraction that is part of the Raghavita Sarana. And the main thing is to find an eternal associate of Krishna, take shelter of that associate, pray to them, and serve them and also prayer and glorify them. They will also help you if that is your mood. Otherwise, if that's not your mood, they will direct you towards that other mood. But these usually a person who is spontaneously engaged in devotional service, they may also know their mood, but they don't reveal it because Prabhupada said you shouldn't speak about it. Even when they asked Prabhupada what was his internal mood, he wouldn't give the answer. Although he, he indicated it in the few statements that he made, but he never spoke directly that he was a gopi or he was a cowherd boy or whatever his relationship was. He indicated certain things and devotees speculated based on those indications. But it's mentioned that if you reveal your internal mood as it's developing, you impair that development. It's something that it's only between you and your spiritual master. That's it. Thank you, Maharaj. That was nice. That that really helped. And and Maharaj, and, and I'm sorry, Maharaj, go ahead. Some of these devotees who you mentioned, they may have known, but they don't speak about it. That's true because I mean they were they th that was like their service. It was such an inspiration that they day in, especially Mother Kalini <laughs> with the milking of the cows in the morning at five o'clock. Like it was such an inspiration that no one could do what she does. At least you know, I, I, 
you know, she gave her life to it. And she was she lovingly attra was attracted to it. She was yeah. special, very special. She was very special, Marge, yes. And Ma Marge, and, and, and you spoke about, you know, that many of us are still on the Anatha Nivriti stage because we have to do a lot of cleaning up. And as we, so Marge, should our um, uh, mindset, I think is the right word, I don't know, but should our mindset be just continue to just follow the process, clean up our acts, continue to serve, and by the, under the guidance of the spiritual master, the seniors, and Krishna will just reveal as time goes on, Maharaj? Because if you're cleaning up and you're serving, you're, 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 you're actually revealing more of your natural Krishna consciousness, your purity. So that Krishna taking over is simply in the process of purification. That's it. And getting purified. We should be consciously aware of where our our anarchists are, where our flaws are, and try to, uh, you know, get beyond them, destroy them, replace them with Krishna conscious spiritual principles. It's like attachment to something material, if it's that same attachment, if it's given towards Krishna, it's transcendental. If it's given towards these mundane things, it's material. So we have to get attached to Krishna by getting attached to the process of becoming Krishna conscious. And and Marj, like you said, which I'm so glad that Dira Krishna made a note of it, because I couldn't get all the words. Like you said, and the underlying mood of service, service is to connect with Krishna. And we express our eagerness and interest for Krishna by hearing about him, by chanting his names, glories, and pastimes, and serving his mission and his devotees. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That in the association of your devotees, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord brings happiness to both the heart and to the ear. In that process of development, then real bhakti and devotional service actually begins. So you might say, you know, following rules and regulations are meant to get you off the bodily platform, but they're not bhakti. Bhakti is attraction for Krishna in different moods. We, if, you, if you're expert at following the rules and regulations, but you're not developing your bhakti, that is called niramadraha. That means simply following rules and regulations for the sake of following. And that is one of the ways to fall down. So we follow rules and regulations because they get us off the bodily platform. They free us from the contamination of the material energy. But bhakti means loving service to the Lord. So the rules and regulations are supportive, but they're not the end in itself. You know? Thank you, Marge. I was making note of how you were saying it. It's so beautiful. I had to make note of it. Rules and regulations are meant to get us off the bat at the bodily platform, but it's not bhakti. But and but once we are able to follow the rules and regulations to get us off the, the bodily platform, Marge, is only when we can open up, quote unquote, the heart to devotional service, Marge. It's, good. it's simultaneously. Simultaneously. Yeah, we have to follow the rules and regulations. Uh, there's in the uh, Nectar Devotion, there's a list of 64 uh, regulations. And these are some of them are, are you know, what they call vidis, things to do, and others are called nishedas, things to avoid. So you have to know what to avoid and what to do. 
But this is preliminary. When you actually start developing your attraction to Krishna, then the rules and regulations become servants of the devotee. And not both of them, yeah, they just assist the devotee. Because they've come to the platform of love. Just for example, we have the example of uh, of uh, Shal Shalbri. Shalbri was this uh, aesthetic lady who was living in the forest, and she had a guru. I think it was Mandaka Muni or some some particular great sage, and he was he had followers. So she was a great devotee of her of her uh, spiritual master. So he he got liberation, and all his all her god brothers also got liberation. But he told her to stay there because soon the supreme personality of God will come, and she should serve him when he comes. So she was living in the forest of Dandikaranya. So uh, she was thinking, well, when he comes, I want to give him some nice fruit. So she was she was tasting these wild fruits that had both a sweet taste and a bitter taste to it. So she would take the fruit, bite it, and then if it had a sweet taste, she would put it in one basket. And if she had a bitter taste, she would put it in the other basket. And she was just waiting for the Lord to come so she could give him the sweet tasting ones. Now she bit them already. <laughs> And you don't you don't eat anything first and then you offer it to the Lord. But her spiritual master said, prepare for the Lord's coming when you greet you come, you know, you welcome him and give him, you know, some nice fruits. So in order for her to make sure that the fruits were the best, she tasted them. And when Ram came, she gave him the fruits that she bit into, and he accepted it because it was based on love. When love is there, rules and regulations, you know, take a backside and take a lesser role. Can't legislate love, it comes naturally. And once it's there, it is the supreme rule. So, Marge, is the process first starts with rules and regulations is to help us to get on the bodily platform simultaneously building bhakti and over a period of time when love slowly develops and becomes sweeter, pure, then the rules and regulations will switch the roles and become the servant, Marge? Is that how it works? Yeah, in other words, they don't become the main thing. The devotee will still follow the rules and regulations, but... If it interferes with their loving service, then that takes a back sign. The Prabhupada did that sometimes. Sometimes he just, you know, did things that were outside of the rules and regulations because it, it pushed down Krishna consciousness. For the sake of preaching, he did that. Preaching is an expression of of devotion because it's it's it, it's the heart of Krishna. When you preach, you're actually getting into Krishna's the essence of Krishna's heart because he wants as many souls to come back. See, Krishna is a greedy lover. He's a greedy lover. He wants to taste loving relationships with each and every one of his parts and parcels. And he knows that each part and parcel just like on the material level, we all have different uh, uh, personalities. No two personalities are exactly the same. No two fingerprints are the same. No two soft snowflakes are the same. No two leaves on the tree are the same. So there's diversity in the material world. In the spiritual world, that is the original of diversity. So each soul has a unique loving relationship with Krishna. That's different from any other soul. Krishna wants to taste. So therefore, when you bring that soul to Krishna, that is, that's the best service you can do. That's good for that person because it gets them out of the material world, 
but it, it connects them to Krishna, and then Krishna can have a loving relationship with that smile. And that's what he wants. <laughs> he felt by said he's a lusty boy. <laughs> <laughs> But his lust is love. It's not, not lust, really. It's, and he, he has an unlimited desire to taste love. Mars, there's another question that just popped up. And uh, this is uh, Bhakti Sora. He's asking is, how to understand if rules are put back because of love? You can't just do that. You have to be able to be on that platform. That's why Prabhupada said it takes intelligence. It's not like you can come up to a certain understanding. You have to be intelligent. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada did some certain things that we can't do. You know? He changed the whole face of, of the performance of bhakti for the Western mind because he needed to adapt it for the Western culture. What he did and what was done in India was done differently in other countries. As, a, as more or less of a compromise. But when Prabhupada was asked about that, he said, I became successful because of that. But then, then the question came, well, how do you know? And Prabhupada said, that takes intelligence. That was the answer. And what what is that intelligence is? What is it? What is a detail and what is a principle? A detail is a detail, and a principle is something that is normal. Just like I'll give you an example. The principle is to chant Hare Krishna 16 rounds. The detail is when do you chant? Where do you chant? That's a detail. The principle is to take only prasadam. The detail is, to, is whatever kind of prasadam you take. That's a detail. So, you know, you have to know. So the answer is it takes intelligence. That's all. But one should not surreptitiously or automatically think that they can just adjust things and push the rules and regulations in the background, then you become fallen, then you become a sahajya. That's called cheap. That's sahajya. You know, you know, you're acting like you're on the loving platform, but you, when you're really not. Thank you, Maharaj. These were like amazing questions and amazing discussion. I'm hearing a voice and I want to make sure that uh, I'm catching someone's question here and hmm, trying to figure out who it is that I'm missing someone's question. Probably it's just my mind. Um, amazing questions, amazing discussion, really, really nice questions. Would like to ask devotees if you have any other questions to ask, um, any thought that's coming to your mind, clarification, anything that you'd like to ask. Mar, this is a really, really sweet topic, as Marat said, very, very sweet purport. And if there isn't, Marat, would you like to end with a run of chanting? Or I know you said you have to go somewhere this evening. Yeah.